Hello, good evening. This is Brian Lobba. I'm the Deputy Superintendent in Clover Park School District. And we will start uh, momentarily, but for um, while you're waiting, if you could in the chat, uh, type in what is your student most excited about for this upcoming school year. So um, while we're waiting for a few more people to join us, um, we will um, have you uh, give us a little thoughts about school starting next week. What's everybody looking forward to? Oh, are you saying we can ask you questions? No, you're going to enter. Um, the chat is open, so you can answer that question that's in the chat. What is your student most excited about for this upcoming school year? And as we go along through the presentation, we'll answer questions as we can in the chat, and then there'll be a Q&A at the end of the session as well. Okay, thanks, because I, I just have a few questions. Yeah, if you have those questions, um, there's a couple people that are in the audience who can answer those questions too. So just go ahead and type them in there, and we'll try to catch them. And if you know of some people who are trying to come to this meeting but weren't able to at 5.30, we are recording it. So it will um, be posted to our district um, YouTube page um, and it should be available tomorrow morning. Or if you miss something that we say during the presentation or want to re-listen to something or get that important piece of information from a slide that uh, went by too fast, um, just look up the district YouTube page and you can find the recording. My daughter's a new student. That's uh, exciting. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll be going over lots of information tonight that might answer some questions we already have popping up in the chat. So we will get things rocking and rolling here in just one moment. So thank you all for joining us. Um, we will kick off the presentation here. Um, and if you have any questions, please put those in the chat and we should be able to answer um, a good chunk of them in this presentation as well. So welcome. Yeah, she was virtual at her other school, but me and her dad separated. So she's going to Lake Louise. So this is like the first time doing virtual for Lake Louise. And where do I get her? Does they said something about a laptop? We'll go over that in the presentation. So we'll open it up for Q&A at the end. Um, if we, if you have a question throughout the presentation, you can put those in the chat, um, but we will be going over some information here in a moment. So thank you for joining us. Yep. All right. Should we get started, Lauren? So welcome everybody tonight um, to the Virtual Academy for Clover Park School District grades K through five, our information session. Um, on the screen, you have a contact phone number. It's really probably the most important part is the phone number, 253-583-5525. That's 583-5525. Um, they can answer your questions if you, we don't get to them in the Q&A or we don't get to them in the chat tonight. Um, and uh, the, that phone number will be sort of your link to Clover Park School District. Um, as we implement this virtual learning for students through the school year. So that's a good phone number to um, have down um, and, and make sure that you have and that easy access because um, you'll probably call that from time to time throughout the school year. Uh, our agenda tonight is just to let you know a little bit about what's going on in the virtual academy. We'll talk a little bit about the personalized instruction and the quality um, of teaching that goes on within the Pearson platform. Uh, the 
curriculum, how the curriculum is uh, presented, um, the use of technology, and then have some opportunity to ask some questions and see if we can provide some answers for you. So we have a little bit of information um, that we're going to share. This is uh, from the Culver Park side. And then Lauren um, from Pearson will provide some information about um, the Pearson Connexus platform. Um, but I'm gonna provide you what, we, what I know about the Culver Park version uh, of K-5 um, virtual instruction. So if your student enrolls in the virtual learning option through Pearson, your student is still enrolled in Clover Park School District at their current school. So the question earlier was, my student's new to the district, I'm at Lake Louise, uh, where do I get my device? Well, everything about your student is centered on Lake Louise. So if you're at Beechwood, or if you're at Rainier, or you're at Carter Lake, or if you're at um, Custer, your student belongs to that school site, and any technology or anything that you need um, in terms of um, supplies comes from that school site. You're still connected to, um, I'll just keep using the family that's at Lake Louise, you're still connected to Lake Louise if there's a PTA event or there's a school um, informational piece uh, and you want to attend that, um, you are part of the Lake Louise community, right? So all contained within the Clover Park School District, um, but you belong to your home school, your catchment school. We're asking for a year long commitment of enrollment in the program. We will provide a computer if you don't already have the computer from last year. So um, our second graders and third graders from last year um, were able to keep their computers over the summer. So um, we wouldn't expect you to be getting a new one unless the one that you have no longer works. Um, our kinders, uh, first graders, and new second graders will all get uh, machines from their schools, as well as our fifth graders will get machines from the school. So the Pearson Learning Program is a blended learning model. And so what we mean by that is there are some times where you are in uh, direct um, live instruction with a teacher, and there are portions of time when what we call it asynchronous or it's independent learning. Um, it's a rigorous academic program and curriculum instructional materials are aligned with state learning standards. Pearson provides state certified teachers for a specific content area and grade levels. Your student would have a class schedule comparable to their homeschool schedule. This means that they'd have core content areas like uh, English language arts, math, science, social studies, and then they would have uh, some specialty area um, like for art, technology, uh, the PE, those would be elective classes or uh, contents or uh, specialist classes that would also be in their schedule. Again, the schedule is very similar to a student's school schedule in terms of the classes that they take. The district will work with families regarding special needs such as 504s and special ed education services. Um, so as, uh, as we learn more about the families who are enrolling, um, we make contact with you and we talk about those uh, needs. Pearson teachers will communicate and work with students and families to support your students learning. The school district will also monitor your students progress and communicate regularly with families in the program. Importantly, we also work with Pearson regarding your students educational journey. So um, the school district is still behind you. Um, we will be reviewing your students progress on the platform, uh, communicate with you when we uh, don't see progress or uh, communicate with you when we see progress, right? So um, we're very um, aligned with the students uh, getting the most out of this virtual uh, platform and progressing through the school year. It's important uh, to know the state requires required immunizations for all students who participate in person or virtual learning programs in the state of Washington. So uh, this means um, measles, mumps, rubella shot, right? All those need to be up to date. Um, you have to clear an immunization to be enrolled in a public school district in the state of Washington. We don't require uh, proof of COVID-19 uh, vaccination. That's not a required immunization, um, but any of the other required immunizations you need to be complete on in order to be enrolled in Clover Park School District. Um, 
as well as any other public online program within the state of Washington. So um, just to be aware. Students enrolled in virtual learning, excuse me, students enrolled in virtual learning with Pearson will have full access to after school activities at their neighborhood school. Families um, will need to transport their student to that neighborhood school, but students may ride available activity buses home based um, on the program at their school. So um, again, we're still looking for you to be connected to your catchment school area. Um, and whatever uh, activities or resources they are providing. Uh, you will still have access to any uh, mental health, social emotional um, counseling services that we have at our neighborhood schools. Uh, and you can <clears throat> certainly connect with the principal of that building uh, to make sure that you have access to that. Now I'd like to introduce Lauren Lichtenberg, the Senior Business Development Administrator for the Online and Blended Learning at Pearson. Thank you so much. I think that covered a lot of information for families and some of the questions that they were asking in the chat. Um, but please feel free to keep um, popping those chat questions in the box and we will either answer them at the very end for you or we have a Clover Park representative answering those questions as well as they come in. So thank you again for joining us tonight. Um, my name's Lauren and that big fancy title essentially means I'm the family engagement specialist here at Pearson and I'm here to offer you a little bit more insight into the Pearson platform and we'll actually go into a demo of the platform and show you what your students can expect when they log in next week for the first day of school, as well as some features available to our parents and caretakers on the call who will be monitoring their student in this virtual learning environment. So here at Pearson, we pride ourselves in offering your student a world class educational experience, all while being housed within an easy to use online learning system. Your student will have the opportunity um, to have a selection of hundreds of courses virtually in this environment. This includes your student's core coursework as well as their electives and any advanced courses that they may um, be eligible for. Your child will also receive the experienced and individualized attention that they may need in a safe and secure learning environment, which is your home. This will allow your child to thrive in a flexible environment that is built for their individualized approach to learning. And lastly, I mentioned that you will be helping, you know, monitor and guide your student in this virtual learning environment. And with that, we realize you may need some supports. And so you have access to a resource center in the platform called Family 411. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, in just a few moments and show you how you can access that support in the platform as well. As you all know, in light of the pandemic, many families have sought out the opportunity for at-home online learning due to a variety of reasons. Maybe your student was medically fragile or had a medically fragile family member at home. We've seen this evolve from supporting these students to serving a student population who truly enjoys the virtual learning environment. And we've seen some of these students go from struggling in the classroom to truly excelling at home. Many families who have been homeschooling their students are seeking the structure and the ability to participate in electives that their local school district offers. With more scheduling flexibility, our online program is ideal for many families and your student's schoolwork can be scheduled to help you accommodate upcoming things like travel, music lessons, sports practices, any other outside activity that would normally interfere with a traditional brick and mortar environment, all without your student falling behind academically. Our learning model is student-centered, and what that means for the parents or caretakers on the call is that you will serve as your student's learning coach, so you will play an active role in their learning process. You will help guide, support, and motivate your student in this virtual learning environment, but you'll also have the opportunity to regularly communicate with your student's teachers to ensure that they're set up for academic success. Our program offers an exceptionally comprehensive and flexible curriculum that is aligned with Washington State standards and it is taught by Washington certified teachers. The virtual learning environment with Pearson is designed for that anywhere, anytime learning. We'll mention flexibility a lot. And our online curriculum is a highly effective alternative to traditional public school or homeschool curriculum. It's designed to help your student gain those knowledge and thinking skills that they'll need for life work and higher education. And they're developed with the four C's of learning in mind, which include critical thinking and problem solving, communication, creativity and innovation, and lastly, collaboration. 
Our core courses meet and exceed national and state standards. Our core courses include language arts at every grade level and a wide variety of social studies. There are traditional mathematics courses as well as advanced mathematics courses and a diverse range of science courses available all virtually in the platform. Your student will also have the ability to participate in electives in the virtual environment. And these are some of the areas that your student will be able to um, take an elective virtually with Clover Park School District. Pearson partners with some of the leading vendors in the education space. And so we partner with companies like McGraw-Hill, BrainPop, and Discovery Education to provide additional enrichment and engagement to your student embedded into the course itself. I'll show you an example of what one of these activities looks like when we hop into the demo in just a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. We believe in providing an educational environment that removes barriers to a student's opportunity to learn and their ability to demonstrate that learning. Maybe your student is blind or low vision, deaf or hard of hearing. Um, maybe they have a learning disability or delay or cognitive limitations or a combination of all of the above. We pride ourselves in being accessible for all students. And with that, our content on the platform is WCAG 2.0 compliant or Web Content Accessibility Guidelines compliant. And what that means is there's intent behind the design of the platform. So there's intent behind the colors used, the contrasting used, the text, the text, the text size um, and font. Um, and every video has closed captioning. And this is to be more inclusive of all students no matter what their style of learning is. In order to provide your student a superior learning experience, seamless technology is needed. And you have that with the Connexus EMS platform or Connexus Education Management System. And so if you see Connexus or you see Pearson, they're one and the same. The um, Connexus is just the formal name of the platform, but it's where your student will log in to complete their coursework every day. And it's where you as the parent or caretaker will have your unique login to monitor your student's progress. And as I mentioned, if you are supporting your student in this virtual environment, we realize you need support as well. And so you have access to Family 411 and Family 411 is an all-in-one family resource center. It's available 24-7, 365, and it has various orientations and tutorials built into the platform, as well as other supports that we realize you may need to utilize in this virtual learning environment. I'm going to share a different screen so we can hop into the demo really quickly and then we will open it up for question and answer. I see we have lots of questions uh, popping into the chat. All right, so I'm gonna assume everybody can see my screen. And when your student logs in to complete their coursework for the day, I know the first day of school is next week, this is what their dashboard will look like. Up in the top right, I am logged in as Kiersey Anderson and she is a hypothetical student with Clover Park School District. But up in the top right, Kiersey can drop down her name and she can change her settings or choose her theme. Um, she can change the colors of the dashboard, rearrange the tiles. We refer to it as a digital locker room and it allows your student to make their dashboard more appealing to them upon logging in to complete their coursework. Your student will also immediately have access to any announcements. So if Kiersey had a new announcement, this would have an alert. It would say one, two, three, however many new announcements that she had unread. And these could be announcements specifically from Kiersey's teacher. Uh, maybe Kiersey's teacher says, don't forget I have office hours tomorrow, looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, or maybe it's an announcement from the district. The district says, don't forget that Friday is a half day, enjoy your long holiday weekend. Kiersey can access these same announcements in the top right via that same exclamation icon. She can also at a glance access her to-do list. Her to-do list will show her any upcoming activities that need to be completed and also show that due date of when they need to be completed by. She will also have access to an activity stream, which is any past content that has been completed by her in the platform. These tiles here are Kiersey's courses. And it looks like Kiersey is an overachiever and she's enrolled in every single course that we absolutely offer on the platform. But fear not, when your student logs in, they will only see their courses that they are enrolled in for the semester when they log in. And within these course tiles, your student can see their current score at a glance. They can also see their progress and how much they've completed in that course so far. By hitting the play button, they can jump into the last activity they were working on. And by hitting this graph or column icon, they can jump into their grade book. And this student orientation course here will be available to all students on the first day. And it's a great course to walk through on that first day of school, because like I said, it's an orientation course. 
So it will walk your student through the platform and show them how to access certain things that I'm going over in this demo today. <coughs> Excuse me, have a tickle in my throat. So up here in the top left is the main navigation menu and we'll click those three hash lines and it'll pop out that main navigation. And this platform is very intuitive. So it will offer information to you and your student in a variety of ways. And so we can see here that Kiersey can access her announcements again via the main navigation menu. She can jump into her overall grade book by hitting the grade book here versus just that course grade book. She can also access any notes that she's taken within the platform. And I'll show you how she can take a note in the platform in just a moment. She can also access her webmail. Webmail is an internal communication feature where Kiersey can send communication directly to her teacher. It's also where she can receive communication from her teacher and receive communication from the district. If you do have a standalone district email, these are two separate communications. So you would log into one address for your school email. And then in order to access webmail, you do have to log into the Pearson platform, go to the main navigation menu and select webmail in order to get any of that communication in the platform. And we also suggest checking your webmail daily upon logging in into the platform. So that's one of the first things you wanna check is your webmail and your announcements. The next thing you'll wanna check is your calendar, which is here on the main navig or the main menu. And on that main, uh, on the calendar, it will show your student their coursework that is due by the day, the week and the month. So that's why it's great to check the calendar uh, first thing when you log into the platform, because your student can see what work do I have that's due today and what work do I have that's due for the rest of the week. And then that way they can help create that schedule that keeps them on track and on pace in this virtual learning environment. Live lesson is where your student will tune in to those live synchronous lessons with their teacher. Live lessons are offered um, at the following schedule. You will get specific times from your teacher, but your student can expect one live lesson per core course per week. So they have four core courses. So they'll have four live lessons for their cores per week, and then one to two live lessons per month for their electives. This is also where your student will tune into office hours with their teacher. If you as a parent or caretaker wish to facilitate a virtual parent teacher conference, live lesson is where you would tune into those. Our K through two students have daily live literacy with their teachers and that's where they'll tune into those daily live literacies. On Mondays, all of our K through five students have homeroom huddles. And so that homeroom huddle is where you will go is live lesson um, to connect with your teacher every Monday. And then on Fridays, all of our K through five students have dish or drop in and say hi. And it's another opportunity to talk to your teacher on Friday face-to-face -face before you all are out enjoying yourselves for the weekend. Another feature that you will use Live Lesson for is Live Tutor. And this is an extra service that the district has chosen to supply with you all. And it's a really great feature. Live Tutor is available for your students' core courses. And it's an on-demand tutor for your student when they need it. So your student has access to a math tutor, a language arts tutor, a science tutor, and a social studies tutor. And these tutors are offered Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for social studies, language arts, and science, and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for math. We realize students need a little extra support with math. And then on Fridays, all of those core courses are offered, the tutoring is offered from 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So lots of support uh, for your student, both from their teacher, as well as from these live tutors. And the live tutors are also certified state, state certified teachers. So it is a teacher that would be tutoring your student. Another great feature with Live Tutor is your student can schedule a tutor. It's called Book Me, and your student has the opportunity to say, you know what, I really struggle with math, or you can decide as a parent, my student is falling behind in math or struggles with math. Every Tuesday at two o'clock, I'm going to schedule them to meet with a math tutor at 2 p.m. And so you can go ahead and set up that schedule for them to meet with a tutor versus waiting until they get frustrated on their coursework to then reach out to that tutor when um, they're a little frustrated or feel like they're falling behind. The student activity tracker is where your student will go in and take attendance. I'm gonna show you how they do that. So I click the student activity tracker and it will load the, the page. And so you would put the date, I'm just gonna to select today's date. And then it has your daily codes that you need to input. So you would put P for present, E for excused, U for unexcused or V for vacation and you can save that attendance entry. 
You can do this with your student in the morning as a fun activity to start the day if you'd like and say, okay, we're gonna sit down and log our attendance or you have the opportunity to log into your observer view and log their attendance. So you don't have to put that on your student to make sure their attendance is taken. You have the opportunity to do it in your view as the parent or caretaker as well. So you'd put that P for present and then you would click save that attendance entry and it would log it for your district. They will be monitoring your attendance. So make sure you log your attendance daily. And then check my work is an internal plagiarism tool. Um, some of our older students like third, fourth, fifth might utilize this feature. They may not, um, but this would be if the teacher wanted something submitted to check for plagiarism, that's where your student would do so via check my work. I'm going to jump into a course to show you all a few features that are available. And this is a second grade language arts class, but the functionality applies to every grade. And so when you're in the main course dashboard, your course is laid out in the order that it needs to be completed. So if Kiersey tried to click 2.1.4, it wouldn't let her complete that activity or lesson until she completed 2.1.1 and so on and so forth. Um, all of the courses have a course guide, which is essentially the course mm -hmm. syllabus and we'll go over the scope and the sequence. And they also have a course overview, which is a high level overview of what the course entails. All courses have a backpack, which within that backpack has a list of course materials. The course materials will have um, materials that are provided to your student. This will be a lot of e-learning or digital textbooks. For our K through two students, you will be mailed physical materials. And that will be mailed to the address that you provided Clover Park School District. So if there is a different address you would like those materials mailed to, you do need to notify um, the folks at Clover Park of the correct address. And those will arrive in the coming weeks. Um, so don't expect for those materials to be there the first week of school. They will take a little bit of time um, to get to your students um, as we are finalizing enrollments and getting all of your students enrolled into the platform behind the scenes. All of the backpacks, uh, or sorry, going back to the course materials, the course materials will also have a list of materials that you will need to provide as a family, but these are traditional items you would see in the brick and mortar environment, pens, paper, pencils, et cetera. If there is ever anything on the course materials list you don't have access to or don't have on hand, please reach out to your teachers. They would be more than happy to provide you an alternative. Um, and then all of our courses have a list of glossary terms as well as web links and resource packets. So I'm going to jump into this lesson here just to go over a few more features. And up here in the top right is this ear icon called text to speech and it will pop out this tool. And by hitting the play button, you can have the entire screen read out loud. You can also highlight just one sentence and have just that sentence read out loud. Your student can pause and stop. They can highlight one word and have that word defined by hitting the book icon. They can screen mask by having the page um, highlight line by line and mask out the rest of the pages they read. They can also magnify or annotate. Your student can go into this settings wheel and they can have the page translated from English to over 100 languages. And we use Google Translate for this overlay. They can also highlight just one word and have that word translated from English to over 100 languages. And here in the second grade language arts class, we have the lion and all of our K through five students in their core courses have a learning buddy and the learning buddy will interact with the student throughout their lessons in their core courses. And so here in this video, the lion is going to ask Kiersey which middle sound out of three words doesn't sound the same. And so Kiersey will watch this video with the lion and at the elementary school level, all of our content models the I do, we do, you do model. So the lion will model the practice for the student, then they will share in that practice, and then the student would complete an independent practice. And again, all of our videos have closed captioning. So Kiersey would watch that video. She'd come down here to complete this independent practice, which again, this is where we partner with additional vendors in the education space. And she'd continue to identify that different middle sound. So if I click these, these would say out loud, bat, hat, and sit, and she would check her work. Great job. She would move on throughout this activity and then it would tell her to come back into the lesson and mark it as complete. She could either be done with her coursework for the day or she can continue on throughout the lesson. If Kiersey wanted to take a note, up here in the top right is the sticky note icon and we'll click that and it will pop out any notes that Kiersey has taken in the course thus far. So we can see she typed a note that said middle sound isn't always the same or she can add a new note by hitting the red plus sign. Your student has another communication tool built into the platform outside of webmail and outside of connecting with their teacher face-to-face -face virtually. 
when we're on that course dashboard, there's this heart icon in the top right, and it's called the student self-assessment. And your student can let the teacher know if they're feeling good or they're not feeling so good about their lesson or their course. And so here, Kiersey can say to her teacher, I'm not really understanding this lesson or this, or this curriculum, or I'm having a hard time. I'm just not understanding it. But I really like this class, and I feel like I'm trying really hard. And she's going to send that off to her teacher. And Kiersey's teacher is going to get a notification that she completed that. And that's going to let Kiersey's teacher know she needs to reach out to Kiersey. Maybe she facilitates one-on-one -on -one office hours, or maybe she provides additional reading or activities to help Kiersey better understand the lesson. Either way, it allows the teacher to reach out to Kiersey and continue to set her up for success in this virtual learning environment. I'm going to jump to the observer view really quickly, and this shouldn't take very long and you'll see why. So if you have multiple students enrolled with Clover Park School District virtually, this is what your landing page will look like. It will give you the option to choose which student dashboard you'd like to select. So to keep things the same, we're gonna go into Kiersey. And once Eva Smith is in Kiersey's dashboard, we can see they look exactly the same. And there's a reason behind that. If you're going to be motivating and guiding and supporting your students serving as their learning coach, you need to know how to access the platform. And so the views are identical. Your observer view is identical to your student's view. You'll be able to see their to-do list, their activity stream. You can go to their grade book. You can go to their web mail and see what they've been communicating to their teacher with. You can see it all. You have full 30,000 foot view. The two main differences are you can't complete any coursework or change any grades and you have access to those supports, Family 411. So if I go to that main navigation menu, I can click Family 411 and it will take me to this tab. And again, Family 411 is available 24 seven, 365 days of the year. If I go to this orientations and tutorials, this caretaker user guide is a great orientation course for parents and caretakers, and it will help better acclimate you to the platform. This getting started tab has one of my favorite features, creating a daily schedule. It will walk you through how to create a schedule that works for your student and their individual needs and maybe their pace of learning, as well as keep you on track with your student. So maybe you go ahead and you schedule those live lessons once you get that schedule from the teachers, or maybe they have some extracurricular activities or other personal events that you need to program in, like a doctor's appointment. Maybe when they normally work on their science or social studies, they have a doctor's appointment and they're gonna shift it back and end their day a little bit later. Maybe you have multiple students enrolled in the virtual environment and you need to create a master calendar so you can keep track of both students' calendars, but make sure that everyone in your household is set up for success. This document is just one of many resources available to you in Family 411. And then if there wasn't a resource in Family 411 that you could find to support what you're looking for, you can go to the main dashboard and up here in the top right is this help or question mark icon. And you can also select that to find additional support or resources that you may need to continue to set your child up for success virtually. That was a very high level overview of what you can expect from the student view as well as the observer view. Um, I know we've had lots of questions popping up in the chat, so please let me know if there are any questions um, that I have missed while I was presenting. Do we have to pick up paperwork from the school? So if you're enrolled in Clover Park School District, so your first step is to do the online enrollment in Clover Park School District, which is off of our district webpage. Um, and then um, if you're already enrolled, you don't need to do that. But if you're not enrolled in Clover Park, you need to start online with enrolling your student. Also on that same page, you'll find the um, information or the link to also um, let us know that you're interested in um, online school, virtual school. Hmm. Yeah, my daughter did virtual at Four Heroes. So this platform is totally different. They did Microsoft Teams. So I don't really know this one too well. Right, that, um, I think we've kind of said along the way and from a number of parents, um, the first class your student will get um, is the orientation course because we really want the kids to explore the platform, do that in a safe way. Um, in the first couple of days of school, that's what they're expected to do is to go and complete that orientation course. Once that's completed, we will um, enroll the students in their full six classes, ELA, social studies, science, math, um, and electives. So that will happen. Laura Lee? Um, yes. 
I, I still have the school computer from last year, but all I have is like the username, which was the student student ID and the password from second grade. But like, how are we going to still be using Microsoft Teams, or is it going to change to? No, Zoom? It's a question. It's been, the question's been asked a couple of times in the chat. Um, I, I can't I can't see the chat for some reason. Yeah, so I, the, mean, I, I only can see them one at a time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's fine. Um, Pearson connects this as a uh, URL. Um, and so you will be accessing it from the web page. Once you're fully enrolled in the Pearson platform, you will get a welcome email from us and it will provide the um, link and the login information. W so when will that be? Um, we had several go out today. Um, I think we had 50. Does it go out to the school computer or to my email? To your family, the family email address that we have that you registered with. Okay. Um, I just have one more quick one, if, if that's okay. Sure. Um, what, what would the hours be? You said it was going to be similar to the regular school hours if they were attending in person? You have to be there online, like logged in during those hours? Each of the classroom teachers um, that you have will send out their live schedule. So they'll let you know when um, they're having their live sessions. And remember, just like last year, when you there's um, what's called asynchronous work or you know, independent work, you can access that at any time on the Pearson platform. As Lauren demonstrated, um, you start in less than 2.1, you get that done, you go to 2.2, but there are specific times that your teachers um, will tell you that they're gonna have a live session during the week um, and your student would participate in those based on the teacher's schedule. Okay, so basically we're just waiting for our teacher to contact us. Perfect, nice way to sum it up. Your words and I would have used. <laughs> Correct, so um, <laughs> also just, I, I, there isn't a set start time if that makes sense for you all, your teachers will reach out to you that first week of school. They'll introduce themselves. They may provide their live lesson schedule right away or let you know that it is coming in the coming days. Um, so those will give you those synchronous times to schedule. Outside of that, your student should complete their work asynchronously. And so a good rule of thumb, and it really depends on the age of the student, because we know a kindergartner is going to work on their curriculum a little less than a fifth grader would, um, especially sitting down in one time block. Um, but we suggest that your student follow that um, they spend roughly one hour per class per day. Um, and so if they were enrolled in six classes, that would be six hours per day. Um, but that includes that live synchronous time and potentially includes maybe if they were meeting with a tutor or whatnot. So we, in order to keep your student on pace, we suggest um, they commit to one hour per course per day. And that's similar to what they would experience in the brick and mortar environment. Now, how they program that throughout the day um, is where that flexibility comes in. You would schedule in those synchronous lessons, those live lessons that the teacher provides or the office hours or the daily literacy. And then um, you would complete the remaining coursework asynchronously. I saw that Destiny's had her hand up for a little bit. So Destiny, would you like to unmute? Yeah, so I just had a quick question um, in regards to, I just wanted to make sure that I was understanding the instruction properly. So are we enrolling through the Clover Park um, website and through Pearson and then collecting the new uh, laptops through the district, is that correct? You just enroll with the district and the district will enroll your student in the Pearson platform for you. Um, so your student is technically a Clover Park School District teacher or student. They are just utilizing the Pearson platform for the curriculum and the teachers. Um, and then you would obtain your laptop from Clover Park. So your, your student is a Clover Park School District student. Um, they are just completing the, this school year um, virtually in the Pearson platform with Pearson curriculum and Pearson teachers. Okay, perfect. That's all I had for you guys. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Vidal, I think you had your hand up, the Ruiz family. Yeah, I just had a question. Um, so I enrolled my daughter already in school, but we want to switch her over to virtual learning. Is that going to be possible? Or... I believe I saw in the chat um, that says enrollment closes September 10th. Mr. Lavalle, okay. did you confirm that? 
Yes, that's correct. So just go to the district webpage, which is right there on the screen for you. Um, and you'll see the virtual enrollment tab and you can just enroll there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Tina Gunderson. Yeah, I just had two quick questions. Um, the first one was like last year, um, are we allowed to use our personal computers due to the fact that unfortunately the ones that the district issues are not the greatest? Yeah, yeah you can use your personal computer. This is totally web-based. Okay, great. And then the other one was, I had asked in the chat earlier, um, the live classes, are those one-on-one -on -one or are those gonna be a group class? It is a group class. So your student is in the live lesson with other students. Is there going to be a higher standard for these group classes, unlike last year where it was just kids jumping all over their beds and running amok because nobody was being accounted for? The teachers do um, pay attention to student behavior in the virtual environment. Um, so yes, teachers will remove students from the classroom if they're not behaving accordingly. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. I think and I think to tack on to what Lauren answered that question with is you know, Pearson's providing teachers who have worked in the virtual platform, right? So that's their training. Um, and so they'll do what they can to engage your students in that live session. Uh, Nathan Rebo. You are on mute. Oh, I'm mute. Okay, I'm muted. Okay, sorry. Okay, yeah, I think I like. I think I like this uh, online. So, and, and Nathan um, was also was virtual learning last year. So, um, I don't think he has problem with um, being online because he he's really used to it. He, he, I like it. He he's yeah. He likes it. I okay. love it. He love it. He he likes to learn. He I like Mrs. I loved Mrs. Kipri. Yeah. Yeah. We I had, loved Mrs. Kepri's class. Yeah. Yeah. He has Miss Kipri class last year and he really enjoyed it. Hello. Yeah, he likes so yeah, I think I like this um Hello. the way the setup Hello. and we this thing where we just have to I think it's a little bit different than Microsoft team, but I'm sure he he will learn oh, to yeah. navigate to navigate through uh, the yeah. whole year and uh, go to it. And I'm gonna help him. And and oh, I always call the school as well whenever each time I have questions. Okay, sounds good. So I, but I just I'm wanna fine. make sure that, um, so it will start on September 1st, the same time as like 8.30 in the morning, right? right? Well, but because it's uh, all students, kindergarten through fifth grade will all start with the orientation course. Oh, okay. So that is completed um, independently. So mm -hmm. once um, you're uh, registered and we get all that login information to you, then we expect the student to complete that orientation course. Oh, once, okay. Once the orientation course is complete, then we'll uh -huh. load all the other courses for the student. And then uh, those teachers will start to contact you. Oh, okay. On, okay, on that day. After the first. And the first. Oh, after the first. Yeah, so what do we? So what do we do on the first day of school? Like I think it day starts on the first of September. Right. It's the orientation course. Oh, okay. So we just log on like we did today. Yep. yep. And well, so when do we get that link after this one? Um, once you're registered and once we've enrolled you in the Pearson platform, everyone will get an email to their home email address that you supplied when you registered. Um, how do I get that registration um, to, to go that to the, Pearson? By going to the district webpage, which is on the screen right now. Okay, so this one, so go in here. If you look at cpsd.cloverpark.k12.wall.us, you'll find our um, enrollment for the virtual program. Is that that little link uh, that say registration form? It's yeah, just yeah. the mm -hmm. name and then the name of the student and then the address and the the grade? Because I already filled that up, I think. Okay, so if you filled that out, then you'll be getting an email pretty soon. Oh, okay. Okay, then. All right. All right, well, thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. 
I think we have Aaron up next to ask a question. Aaron, would you okay. like to come off mute? You're muted. Aaron, you are still on mute. Okay, we will move to Carmen. Carmen, did you want to come off mute? Hi. Um, so I will be, I'm wondering, this is regarding my six-year-old son. Um, he's going into first grade. And this is, of course, really new to us. We're just really confused. I know he, ideally, we would, he would do great in person, I want to think. Um, but because of health, um, issues at home, um, we're keeping him home, or that's the plan. But we do want to know, um, I wanna know where he would do best. Last year he um, was doing virtual learning, uh, but it was, that consisted of daily two hours with his teacher and class. He did really great. He would, I, I believe he was um, above what they were learning at the moment and he learned very well. Um, he was one of those kids that were running around and jumping up and down the bed, but that is because he, that's, he, he's actually taking medication for it, um, but he's learning wise, he was doing amazing. And I loved that his teacher was very understanding of how he just needed to move around. That's just him. Um, I just don't know if he would be able, of course, going from kindergarten to first grade, how many classes I can expect for him to have um, for first grade. Um, if teachers would be flexible to this, I mean, you know, he wouldn't be the one sitting down for however long they have to be in class. It's, um, again, he's taking medication for it and I can get a doctor's note for it. And I wanted to know about how many students he would be meeting with, or if there would be enough one-on-one -on -one time. So um, as a first grader, he will have four live lessons per week with it for his core courses. And those live lessons range from 25 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the lesson. As a first grader, he'll also have daily literacy with his teacher. Those are live lessons as well. On Monday, he has homeroom huddles. And on Friday, he has DISH, which is drop in and say hi. Those are obviously optional, but great opportunities for your student to connect with their teacher. The live lessons are recorded. So if your student were to miss a live lesson, um, they can watch the recording later. However, the, te the teachers do take note of attendance in those live lessons. So if your student is continuously missing a live lesson, that will be noted. Um, so that's in terms of the, that face-to-face -face synchronous aspect of it. So you can probably expect your student um, to have at least one hour per day or close to an hour per day with those daily literacies that, they, that he'll have at the first grade level. Okay. Outside of that, um, he would be completing his coursework at his own pace asynchronously. Okay, and most activities would be the courses you mentioned on the program. Um, it wouldn't be um, papers or forms that we pick up from school. No, and if you you since he is a first grade student, he will receive some workbooks from Pearson. Okay. So he does receive some physical materials, but those are mailed directly to that address you provided, Clover Park. Okay, perfect. Okay, and um, also, what are the chances or what are the options, let's say, after the first semester or depending on quarters, for us to switch back to um, in person? I believe at the beginning of the presentation, they said this was a year long commitment. Um, but obviously, I believe you could reach out to the district with any specific um, issues. But at the beginning, they did state that it was a year long commitment to the virtual environment. If you choose to unenroll and want to do in person for this year, it would have to be by September 10th. Okay. It, to switch to in person, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You are very welcome. I think we had Stephanie have a hand raised next. Stephanie, would you like to come off mute? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so my uh, first question, so I noticed when you were going through the oversight of the just the Pearson um, platform in general, you mentioned um, doing attendance. Is there a reason why the teachers won't be doing attendance and the students are expected to do this? Because the students are Clover Park School District students and Clover Park School District is checking for attendance. Um, the state also checks Clover Park to make sure their students are attending schoolwork. So it's kind of a double check system. Clover Park's checking you and Clover Park is being checked by 
the higher powers that be. Um, and so the Pearson teachers do take attendance for those live lessons, but they're not checking in with your student every day to take attendance. Um, so that's why your student being a Clover Park School District student would log their own attendance. And then when Clover Park runs their report through the platform, they can see when your student was present and not present. So on top of, so does that mean that the teachers won't be doing synchronous classes every day? It'll just be like one or two, three days out of the week? So depending on what grade level your student is, K through first. two, they do have, okay, so first grade, they will have daily live literacy. But again, those teachers are not Clover Park School District teachers. They are Pearson teachers. And so that's why um, the district has chosen that the students or the parents will take their attendance. The teachers do take attendance in those live lessons, but they don't report that to the district. It was reported on the back end in a log. So if you as a parent were to reach out um, and facilitate maybe a meeting or something, um, there's proper documentation for all communication, all attendance, and all performance of your students in the platform. Okay, and then, so is this attendance only going to be done once per day or every time they have a separate class? Nope, just once per day. So that first time you log in in the morning, you go to that student activity tracker, you put a P for present, you save it, that's your attendance for the day. Okay, and then um, who, who's deciding the courses? So I know there was a mention of after the, um, the initial orientation course, they, they would start their, their courses. Who, are we going to get a, like a list of what they're going to be enrolled in? So the district will um, assign your student courses based on their grade level. Every student will have their four cores. So math, language arts, science, social studies. And then the district will also enroll them in their coinciding electives um, that, they, that they need or they believe that they should be participating in at their grade level. Okay. And then um, I know you wouldn't be able to answer this question, but when do we pick up the computer and um, I need a Wi-Fi connection because I don't have Wi-Fi at my resident. Uh, just check with your home school. So um, I don't know which school you're attached. Lake Louise. So just check with Lake Louise on their distribution. Of yeah, I've tried calling them multiple times. I've left multiple messages. No one's gotten back to me. Okay, well, we got that note. So we'll um, get that out. Um, to the principal at Lake Louise. Okay. And then um, will will the scheduling of classes, because I know we've discussed both this uh, synchronous, you call them um, homeroom huddles or live lessons. Um, are those going to be on specific days or like every day? So the homeroom huddles are on Monday only. The daily live literacy is every day. The live lessons, you'll get the schedule from your teacher when they reach out the first week of school. And then Friday is DISH, which is drop in and say hi. It's just another opportunity for your student to connect on Friday before the weekend. So every Monday, they'll have homeroom. Every Friday, they'll have DISH. A first grade student will have daily live literacy. And then um, they will have their four core live lessons. And then depending on the week, they may have a live lesson for their elective. Live okay and then um i know you mentioned the live lessons are about 25 to 45 minutes um yes. how long how long are these daily live literacy it depends on the day but it can be 30 minutes to an hour 30 minutes it depends on what the teacher is covering that day okay and then um the homeroom huddles only on monday that's correct and how long is that it varies for the teacher and that week, um, there's not a set time for that. Okay, so is there a ballpark idea? I don't have that, I apologize. It, it Again, it depends on the teacher. Okay, and then this, so if Friday is the drop in and say hi, is that an actual class or are they just coming in to say, hi, how was the week? Or they don't actually have any classes that scheduled that day? The homeroom huddle and the Friday drop in and say hi are just, opportunities for them to connect with their teacher it is not a class are these um in addition to the daily live um literacy and the the four Correct. lessons they're additional okay. yes oh and then th so those two things are are monday through friday the daily live literacy are monday through friday okay 
All right, we just have a few more minutes before we're um, closing the session down. Um, I think maybe we'll move on to another person here to see if they have some questions. Yes, thank you for your question, Stephanie. I think we had Freeman next. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you guys? Good, what was your question? So my question is, um, I noticed you said something about recording. Do you mean, um, are the live lessons video recorded? Yes, they are. Okay, now for those parents that do not like their child to be on video or, you know, such things like that, how do you go about that situation? Because I know what my son had is the last school when he was on virtual, you know, the principal actually was okay with that, you know, I just had his camera on, but his face wasn't in it. So how do you guys work around that? You'll have to talk with the teacher. That's a case by case situation and that's up to the teacher. Um, but it is encouraged that the students do attend their live lessons and do have their cameras on as far as um, how much of the student is visible. Again, that's a conversation you can have with the teacher once you have access to the platform next week. Okay. And then also, um, so school is five days a week, but Monday and Friday is only for you to check in. But Mon nope, so Monday sorry. and Friday is just for you to check in and Monday through Friday, or I guess Tuesday through Thursday is just a live session for however long the teacher has them on. So that's at Monday through Friday is the school week. So your student is expected to work on their coursework traditionally like they would in the brick and mortar environment Monday through Friday. They will have additional synchronous live opportunities with their teachers Monday through Friday. So they're expected to work um, their traditional school day Monday through Friday, or maybe your student does eight hours on Monday and they're gonna do a little bit less on Tuesday. Um, but the expectation is one hour per class per day. And so assuming your student has, you know, um, six, uh, six to eight classes, that's six to eight hours a day spread throughout the day. Obviously that also depends on the grade level. Um, that includes those live lessons that they have with their teacher though as well. Okay, so some of it will be asynchronous. Correct. That's correct, yes. Okay. okay, and my last question is the orientation that's done online. I noticed you guys said it's right here on this website that's posted. Now, do we have to, I guess like being that you guys are not issuing devices until after. I'm trying to figure that whole thing out because I'm a little confused. Is the orientation done online? And if so, why are devices not, you know, we can't pick them up until after school starts or something. I want to make sure I'm not confused. So you have a, a through September 10th to get that orientation class done. So uh, that's why we're giving everybody a little bit of time because we're one, getting students enrolled in the platform make sure that they have access to the technology and then their full course schedule doesn't come out till later. So it, um, uh, it, it should, it'll work, all work out. So um, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, make sure that your students enrolled and then um, we'll get that login information to you. Okay, so we have up until 10 days to get a device so that way they can do that orientation on that device. Yeah, I, and it shouldn't take that long to get the device. I, all the devices, okay. all the devices are at the school. We're just waiting for staff to be at the school to be able to check it out. Right, and that's why you give until September 10th to complete the right. orientation for right. everyone. Correct. Okay, thank you. Good question, though. Thank you. I think glitter was next, um, and I I don't think we'll get to everyone's hand raised, so we will take glitter and see if we have more time. Um, but those who we may not get to, please put your questions in the chat so we can answer you via chat or follow up with you after the call. Okay, so what we'll say if my daughter has like to go to an appointment that she has to miss a whole day of school, how would I go about that? You would mark your student as unexcused absence, excused absence, or if they're a V for vacation. So depending on what type of absent it is, you can log that in the platform. Um, if your student were to miss a live lesson that day, they can watch the recording. Because my daughter in December is going to miss a whole day because she has to get surgery. Yeah, so you would mark it excused absent. Okay. And you can also plan ahead for her schoolwork. You know she's going to be out, so maybe she works ahead a little bit to accommodate those days when she'll be out. Okay. 
Great question. Thank you. I think we had Antoine next. I'm going to take Antoine and we should have time for him. Right. And that'll be our last question. Ah, yes, I had a quick question. Um, we'll be PCSing in February. Um, so you may or may not have the answer to this question, but would we need to withdraw our student from um, our Clover District School being as though it's strictly online or would they be able to continue since we're doing it via our, we, I mean, we can complete the um, rest of the school year via our own laptops? Um, no, you would have to withdraw from uh, your home school and then we would transfer any grade or progress of your student to your next school that you're going to attend. Okay, thank you. Great question. Um, I don't believe, um, well, we could take one more. Would you like, we have one more minute, Mr. Lamar. All right, all right. <laughs> Clarissa, I had you up next. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Oh, okay, thank you. I had a quick question. So say if your child needed um, speech therapy or social skills, um, would that be a part of their curriculum or would that be an in-person contact for the school that they would actually so you'd be, be a working, part of? Um, depending on if your student has a 504 or an IEP, you'd be working with the team and then we would work on a way to provide that um, related service to you virtually. Okay, so that would be a part. Yep. Okay, great. And so that would be um, part of the orientation or it would be, how would the, that, how would the, we? Um, the IEP team would be reaching out to you if they haven't already or a 504 team will reach out to you. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. That's my question. I appreciate Perfect. it. Perfect. That's a good question. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. I did go ahead and put Venetia's contact info back on the screen. I know we weren't able to get to everyone's hands raised. Um, so we thank you all for attending tonight. We thank you for all of your really great questions. Um, I think a lot of the questions you had benefited a lot of the families on the call. Mr. Laval, is there anything you'd like to say before we end tonight's call? No, I appreciate everybody's um, participation and the questions being asked. I think those were all great questions. Um, we will have this uh, presentation posted to the YouTube page for the district. And we can find that from our district webpage as well. Um, and you can rewatch the entire presentation, stop, um, listen to questions and answers, those sorts of things, uh, so that you get yourself uh, well informed for the upcoming school year. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Have a great evening. Goodbye. Yeah.